Hi class. In this lecture here, what I want to do is I want to walk you through your module three assignment. Um, basically, what I want to do is I want to show you how to use Excel to answer some of the questions that are listed below. Um, also, kind of like walk you through what some of the questions mean and what they're really asking. Okay, so this assignment picks up where module two assignment left off, and we will use the components of that assignment as a foundation. So what you first should do is you should take your old data set. You, hopefully you kept it, you didn't delete it from the, from the first assignment, and you're going to want to hang on to the scatter plot um, that you created with it and the regression equation that you found in that, okay? All right, so there's a module three assignment template here that you can download. And I'll also post a sample one as I have been doing. And you're going to have to answer, you know, all these questions here in, in the assignment. So what I want to do is I want to walk you through in Excel how you get some of these things. You know, how, again, we already have the regression equation, R, R squared. Talk about the slopes and the intercepts. Okay, so the first thing here. Uh, provide the regression equation for the line that best fit the data that you had. So what you should have had is you should have had it still saved. It's right here from your regression line. So it's y is equal to 220.4 times the x variable minus 215520. Okay, and this right here is our regression equation. Our slope here is this 220.4 and this minus 215520. 215,520, that's our intercept, okay? Next thing it says is determine the value of R, okay? And R is the linear correlation coefficient. And we know that it's a value between um, uh, negative one and one. So if it's close to negative one, what that means is there are um, evidence of a strong negative linear relationship. If it's close to one, that means there's evidence of a strong positive linear relationship. Uh, so if it's close to zero, it just means that there's no evidence of a linear relationship. Not that there isn't a relationship, just that there is no linear relationship. All right, so to do that in Excel, it's very easy. You're going to go equals C-O-R-R-E-L. That's for Corel. That returns a correlation coefficient. So I'm going to select my first array. I always select my X variables first. doesn't matter for this one here. Comma, then I'm going to select my Y variables, which we know is the median listing price. And this right here is our linear correlation coefficient, okay? And since the value is close to positive one, there is evidence here of a strong linear relationship between the variables. But that's good, that's what we would expect, right? Like we would expect that as the square feet of the house goes up, so doesn't the, the listing price. Okay. So um, again, I'll, I'll let you flush this stuff out, but uh, you know, close to one, it's positive. Our slope is positive. So we're seeing this positive linear relationship between the variables. Okay, next let's examine the slopes and intercept of your uh, regression equation, okay? So our slope here, I'm just gonna put this over here, is equal to this 220.40. Okay, it's in terms of dollars. And what this means is that on average, okay, every, um, every additional square foot of your house, okay, on average, okay, uh, whenever you have an additional square foot, it'll increase the listing price by $220.40. Okay, so, you know, that's, that's pretty good. The intercept here, we see that the intercept is equal to negative uh, $215,520. So you can only have a meaningful interpretation of the intercept if you have x values close to zero. So our x values is our square footage, right? So, you know, if you look here, our lowest possible x value is here. It's, uh, you know, a square footage of 1,685 feet. That is nowhere near um, zero. So there's no meaningful interpretation of the intercept here. Okay, there's a question here next that says, um, determine the value of the land only. So that's when X is equal to zero. So that's the intercept. But again, that, that doesn't make sense. So that's saying, oh, land without a house on it is worth negative $215,520. That's not the case. Okay, so there's no 
meaningful interpretation to uh, of the intercept here to determine the land value, right? Because first off, this is a listing of uh, home sales. Okay, home sales are different than land sales, right? So you can't use this this data set, you know, which is talking about home sales, the homes with square feet, to to estimate the value of land only. That's just not the case. Okay, so determine the R squared coefficient. Okay. So R squared, there's two ways you can do it. R squared is just equal to R squared, literally like that. So you could just square your R value here. Also, if you go back into your scatter plot here and right click on the data and click add trend line, you can see that you can click this here that says display R squared value on chart. And you see it's 0 0.6503, 0 0.6503. And what this is, is this is the coefficient of determination. And what that means is, look, just take these two homes here, or, you know, these two homes here. This is a better example. All right, notice that if to go from Garland County to Midland County, the, the home prices increase. Well, so doesn't the, the, the square footage, okay? So what this is saying is 65% of the variation in the price, so 65% of the difference in the price can be explained by the difference in square footage, okay? Um, there's a lot of other factors, right, that, that go into um, determining home value, right? Like, you know, what's around it, amenities, school districts, things like that. But what we're saying is, well, look, 65% of that difference in price, that variation in price, can be explained by the variation in the square footage. All right, so... The next thing, conclusions here. I'm going to just help you get this started, but I don't want to give too much away because I want you to also do this. Um, is the square footage of your homes in your selected region different for homes overall in the United States? So for this comparison here, you're going to need to use this Excel, or this PDF from the national statistics right here. Okay. Um, you know, it'll give you this. I already had it loaded up. Um, and you're going to look at the square footage and you want to pay attention to the mean quartile one, median quartile three, and max. So what you can just do is you can take your median square footage, go to insert, you can click recommended graphs or this little arrow here. Let's pop in a um, box and whisker plot. And I'm just going to change the axes around a little bit. And then you can also add data labels here so that you can see the min, the max, and your quartiles. And what you might want to do I'm trying to just delete the, the title here for you. Uh, what you might want to do is compare these values here um, to the national statistics, right? So for, for your data, are they close to the national value? Or are they not close to the national value for, in terms of square footage? Like how does your data set compare? Next here, uh, let me help you with this one. Um, one of the last questions you see here, it says, you know, for, for every 100 square feet, how much does your price go up? Well, you can use your slope to determine that, right? So our slope here, that was equal to uh, $220.40. So for every 100 feet, you know, square feet, um, how much will it go up? You could just take this and multiply it by 100. And what you would see here is that we would expect that for every additional 100 square feet, my home price goes up $22,040. Okay, it's pretty good. Uh, one last thing, uh, we, we did this one user regression occasion to estimate how you would list your home if it was 1,200 square feet. We already did that. And what square footage range would the graph best be used for? So you have to determine um, that range. So if I like, for example, if I look at my data set, 1,200 is like way, way outside the bounds of the model. Okay, so the model is really good for estimating home prices in between you know, where you have data. It's not great when you try to go way below or way above the model. So so for, for my question here, I would say the range that the model is good for 
is somewhere between you know the lowest value and the highest value, the min and the max. So somewhere roughly between 1,600 square feet, maybe 2,800 square feet. You know, you could even maybe use it for 29, 1,500. But then once you get out after that, it's just so far outside the bounds of the model that the model might not be a good fit anymore. So you will have to look at your data set and determine that. All right, I will pull, follow this up with a sample report that I'll write for your review, but uh, I hope this uh, helped get you started on your assignment.